back in the Sherm Shack. Guess what came? Zeb. So let's take a look at this bad boy. It is sexy. Uh, pretty sweet. Came with a little fender. You got your volume space. You got your zip tie. Hey, check this guy out. Oh my. Let me get some close ups of this bad boy. Mm mm mm. She's beefy. Uh, you can get a Rock Shox, uh, like proprietary fender, kind of like Fox does. Three bolts goes in there. But yeah, guys, here's the Zeb. This is the Zeb Ultimate. She's got the new damper, the RC2. It's got high speed, low speed compression, adjustable rebound, uh, just low speed. Fine with me because too many clicker clacker things just, you know, gets me all confused. This bad boy, 38 millimeter stanchions. It is already set up for a 200 millimeter rotor uh, post mount, which I have 203, so we'll have to get some spacers for that. <laughs> So what you're going to need for this job here, you're going to need yourself a hacksaw. We're going to do it my way. You're going to need an air pump to do your air pressures, uh, a gauge to measure. I need some spacers, so i got to figure out what I can use. Uh, homemade star nut uh, impactor. I can show you how I did that when I get to it. And an old stem that I'm going to use to cut the steer, I'll show you. We're going to do this the hacky Sherman way, and I won't bore you with the dismantle part, but... Let's get this bad boy on and we'll compare weights, get it on, set it up, and then take it to the trails and do some more footage. And hopefully I can give you a review. Let's do it. All right, got this bad boy off. The Yari is no more. Uh, this would be a good time if you guys want to re-grease your headset. Mine's looking a little grimy in there. Here's the old fork. It's looking a little nasty. Uh, the top cap came in the bottom bearing right there. They're looking a little chunky, so I'm going to go ahead and redo, uh, re-grease those. Uh, but before, what you guys didn't see is I put my bike on the ground, and I measured my stack, well, really just from the the ground to the top of, like, my bar, and to see how many inches that was, so I can kind of match that up with this bigger fork, because uh, that is a 170, and this is a 160. Uh... I want the more travel, but I think I'm going to lower my stack a little bit and I'm going to lower my headset or lower my stem down a little bit so I can get a little more front end traction, probably even things out since the fork's 10 millimeters taller too. And I also measured my spacers uh, beforehand to see how high it was off of the top cup here. Just doing all sorts of measurements. Uh, yeah, just kind of doing it, doing it as I go. Next thing is... We got to get this crown race off, and as you can see, I kind of started it. But all you got to do is get a screwdriver under that little notch right there. Hopefully, your guys' fork has that. If not, they do make a tool for it. If not, you get lucky and you can do this. You can just get you a nice flathead screwdriver. Kind of just started prying, and you can work your way around. Yay! So take that nasty guy off. Oh no, not on the bench. Pretty much this thing is, I don't know, trash I guess, huh? Nah, I'll sell it or keep it for a spare. I pretty much have enough parts now to build another frame. Now let's weigh these bad boys. I'm gonna weigh the Zeb first. Because it is a claimed weight of 2,265 grams, and that's a 170 mil 29er without the with the steer cut. My steer is not cut. Need the star nut to make it fair. Add the plastic. 2346. Oh, oh, you guys like those Crocs? Yeah, baby. Now here's the little 35 mil Yari. Nothing's touching. And with the steer tube cut on that, it's 2,089 grams. All right, next step, we gotta get that crown race on. Uh, same thing, mine's got the little slit for when I need to take it off, but slide her down over here. 
and be a hillbilly like me and have an extra piece of pipe or a PVC, you can go get this anywhere. Or you can buy the Park Tools tool or whoever makes it for more money. But this is a little cheaper. A little cheaper way to do it. <clears throat> oh, I need to go on the ground, sorry. Give her a few whackaroonies. And boom, she's on. Next up, we need to put this in the bike and get her measured up for, see where we're gonna cut it. So let's do that real quick. I went ahead and greased everything. Gonna throw a little more grease around the bottom here before I throw this bearing in like so. Slider in the hole. And voila, I'm gonna run it like that. That tall. So pretty much just piece it back together as if this was the final product. Put your top bearing cap, the pressure, final top cap, seal it. And then this is the washers I was running. But I wanna make it a little bit longer uh, just in case I do switch frames and I have some room to play with. So I'm going to put this spacer, actually, I'm going to put my bars on and then this spacer to lower my stack. Stacks on stacks. There you go. Put that spacer on. Take something to scratch it with. And now you know where to cut it. So take her all back apart. And let's hacksaw this. All right, the scary part's next. Gonna take your old hacksaw. A little rusty right here. Got a fresh blade on it though. Just make sure you measure twice, cut once, as they say. Yeah, so you guys are gonna love how I do this. Forgot, you're gonna need an old stem. Yeah, a rental sim, this piece of crap right here. I hate it. I never liked it. Everybody loves rental. So here you go. I'm gonna use it to as a cutting edge. It's got a pretty nice flat side here. We're gonna take it straight down to that line. Greasy. Straight down to that line. We're gonna tighten the one good bolt that's in it still. All the other ones seized up. Probably because maybe I don't know why. But yeah. Don't put titanium bolts in this rental stem because they seize up and there's one right there still stuck in it. And we can take this bad boy and give her a few uh, hacks. That was hard to do without a stand. But look at that, a nice, fresh cut. All right, clean that cut up, look at that. <whistles> Old hacksaw job without a stand. Straight as an arrow, I hope. Anyways, I'll show you guys a quick and easy way, another little hack here to make a Starnut uh, impactor, whatever you wanna call it, to get this in to the correct depth. Uh, I think you want it around like a millimeter and a half or so. Uh, if you don't know exactly, look it up, or you can just measure your old one. And that helps, but here I took a, this is a, just an old socket I don't use, a 13 16 whatever. It's something big, short, fat. Take an old uh, headset bolt, throw it through that side, and then you want to measure enough spacers. I found some old, like, brakes, uh old brake spacers I don't even know through my drunk drawer I don't know what the hell they are and measured them out to about a millimeter and a half it's right under a millimeter and a half and then you thread your star nut on nope you might want to put it on the right way make sure you put it on that way because you're driving it that way you want to 
Tighten that down. Bada bing, bada boom. Put it right here. And uh, get your old hammer out. I might do this on the ground, so let's do that. I got my block under there. Make sure you have something under here so you don't jack your rebound knob up. And it's on rubber. Uh, this tool will just kind of help you get this in straight. They also make professional tools for the job, but ain't nobody got time for that. Hit it down until it hits the bottom of that socket. And you'll know you're in to the correct depth. Bottom drown. Undo the bolt. Take that out with your spacers. And would you look at that, guys? You got a star nut inserted perfect depth. Oh, yeah. Now the fun part. Fresh grease, because I had to wipe it back off. <laughs> grease this bad boy and let's slide her on and see what she looks like. Yeah. She is well lubed up. Maybe a little too lubed up. But too much grease can't hurt, right? Oh, she scored it out the sides. A little excess here. Just dab it back down. Ready to squirt. Wipe your hands off. Cause that shit's nasty. Um, and I think I'm gonna try those two. Just enough room to put that on there. Top cap. And there you guys go. You got a new fork on your bike. And you did it with the cheapest tools the cheapest way possible. Uh, let's clean this up. We got to tighten all the bolts or grease the axle. And then for... Uh, it's a 200 millimeter post mount, like I said earlier. Find you some washers. I have something, I'm gonna go get something better, but I found these, they're a millimeter and a half thick. You wanna just separate the difference. So an extra three millimeters, obviously one and a half. So uh, one and a half millimeter spacers in between your caliper, put those on, put the wheel on, and let's see how this thing rolls. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm just staring at it. This thing's freaking sexy. All right.